Okay, so we are recording. If uh, just joined us, if you could open up the Patterns Approach teacher site, and then it'll automatically open a new one, the agenda. And then also within the agenda, the idea capture tool. So you'd have three tabs. And as you uh, finish getting those prompts one to four, you just want to respond to someone else. Uh, just some information all gives you a chance to see who's here in the webinar. Also that question <laughs> assessment. Um, I don't get a ton of feedback from people, so I'm always glad to hear it though. Please just uh, let me know how you're doing and what's working, what isn't. But uh, assessment is the thing everyone is interested in and also doing very differently. So we're uh, willing to share just and I, you know, I don't know that we know what the best way to do that is. So that's a really important time to elaborate. All right, so we're, we'll start in one minute, but if, uh, if you didn't hear the first part, I'm asking if you could have uh, three tabs open. The first one is the teacher site, that's roachteachersite.org. Then the, also in the email. And then also the idea capture tool. That is going to, well, I'll, I'll circle back to that. So just about 30 seconds. Okay. All right. So I'll just quick introduce myself. I see a lot of familiar faces. This is, you know, it's pretty cool actually to say, um, I think several of us have collaborated for years upon years now. So that's pretty awesome and, and welcome anyone new. I, I hope the same for us as well. So just super clear, you know, physics for the next generation patterns approach webinar for unit two. So it is a webinar. So it is that, um, there's this like 20 minutes of just me blasting and uh, I'll go over the agenda here, but it is that webinar, the less interactive. So not like our workshops where you're wearing that student hat a lot. We do have a student hat experience, but just one. Okay, so just to be clear, it's the overview of unit two, distance learning calendar, and then one deeper dive. Uh, just to make it manageable for me, um, I am going to be checking the idea capture tool parking lot questions. So I got a second screen up here with that. It's going to be really hard for me to uh, manage all of the channels of communication. So the chat, which I definitely encourage you to do, is going to be more for um, interacting with each other. So the, uh, the ones that give me a chance to give a kind of a thoughtful response is uh, that parking lot questions. So I will occasionally, uh, anytime I'm pausing to let you look at something, I'm gonna be checking the parking lot, but not really monitoring the chat. Okay, with all of that, let's go and look at the agenda. So if you do have that open, see I got a lot of tabs open. So I might close this one. Oh, nope, I'm gonna put the useful links 
quick just to make your life easier. Probably could have done that before. So I'll put that in the chat. If you didn't get to it, here are the three links that we'll be using. Very often. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go to the agenda first. So just useful links up top, probably already familiar with them, but just a welcome, we're right on time. <coughs> and uh, this first part is gonna be that blast of the overview of unit two. So 25 minutes about, then a that deeper dive, a peek at the student experience with uh, teacher Desmos again, and then uh, just uh, reflections and uh, just a Q&A to end. Um, one big idea that I wanna say about unit two is it is compared to in-person learning, it is less independent constructivist, right? And you know that's the feedback that's consistent. It's like that over distance learning is not the right mode. So it is more guided inquiry. So they are not constructing the complex displacement equation. So just note that. So if you have that, like when you see it in there and you think, oh, how are my students gonna have created that? They're not creating it this time. So know that it is more on the guided inquiry. They're meant to explore. It's really emphasizing our big goals, graph literacy, computational thinking, and CER, scientific argumentation. All right, so prioritizing those, this is the modifications that we've made. Just do a quick check, parking lot and uh, chat looks clear. Okay, good, so well, I the, I'm just gonna dive in. So you're gonna see me keep going back. So I'm on the Patterns Approach Teacher Site website. And again, here's the link to get the template yourself and a tutorial about how to customize it to your class webpage. And I, yep. So with that said, I'm assuming there's some familiarity. In fact, I meant to look at the idea capture tool with from coming from patterns one. Yeah, just looking at it. Okay, so people, it looks like people are familiar with unit one. So I won't dive too much into that. That video does tell you how to do it. But it, so I'm gonna do a 40 second overview and then a 20 minute overview. So the 40 second overview is that we introduce them to texting and driving and with an explicit goal of having them take on a big complex problem. So we're not trying to simplify it for them. Uh, we do provide a lot of structure though that does simplify, I guess. So um, we want them to handle some of the complexity, I guess is what I really mean. And then we're gonna start giving them tools for handling complex problems. And then of course, we, after we've broken it down, we gotta figure out what's going on during the distraction phase, the reaction phase, and the breaking phase. So they're gonna go and do a mathematical model for the breaking, this is time of breaking, and then this one is distance while breaking. And then we end with the decision to whether to assess them through having them use computational thinking to think about a new situation or use a graphic organizer to create a scientific argument, CER. All right, so that's the one minute overview. So now I'm gonna go back up and let's do a 20 minute overview. So again, it's not gonna be everything, but it's gonna be certainly more. All right, so, um, People that I think are familiar from unit one that uh, they get, this is meant to be um, in smaller groups. So students are really, we're trying to still keep that interaction and there is feedback on like, there, there's some, there's like, there's reluctance to turn on video, which is very understandable. And um, it can go both ways and you're just encouraging them to interact. You know, some is um, asynchronous, some is they're interacting synchronously, but only through the Google slides. So, audio off, video off, those kind of things. So those are all the permutations that I've heard. And the uh, positive that I heard is that students are like, this class, they're actually learning something. They're not just watching videos and filling out a worksheet. So it does seem like it is working for some students and I'm sure there's a range of experiences out there during the Q and A and the reflection you might have a chance to address some of that. But in any case, they land in a group and th these might be pre-assigned or they might be random depending on how you run it. 
And then there'll be someone that signs up for the red A, the blue A, the green B, the yellow B. And uh, sounds like most people are familiar with the trajectory of in-person learning. So we still do the pizza and I don't wanna go into the pizza very much. Actually, the pizza is up here, sorry about that. So, and they just talk about what are the things you have to do to order a pizza, you know, red A has to put in three, blue B has to put in three. And then after they say, make it, bake it, take it, they slide these over to the appropriate spot. And you can tell this is just a warm up activity. And then we, sh all the purple slides are uh, slides that are just in group one because they're for teachers. And we left them in group one so you see when that people to mute if you could give me a little background noise no big deal though uh so there's teacher slides here that show you where in the activity that you bring them back and you know again there's that if you want to use that request from the health teacher we watch the video a couple times and you are guiding them about what to be noticing and we're going to watch it just in case anyone hasn't seen it for a while we're going to watch the last one which has the most uh tools for them to extract the important information. But they should be seeing this beforehand already in the class discussion. Uh, video is always a little tricky, but I, um, I'm gonna see if this, if I set everything up. Just quick uh, thumbs chilling. up, can people hear? Yep, thank you. Yeah, I don't know where he is. I'm on my way. I'm gonna be a little late. Chris isn't here yet. I've texted him a few times, but he doesn't seem to be responding. Oh, <laughs> oh that's anticlimactic. Right there at the end on, we know how, we probably have seen this all before. Oh, I don't know why that's happening, but uh, we'll give it five more seconds. But of course it pops up, what will happen? And uh, they, you of course have that gruesome one where he is lying down and uh, split screen though is, you know, what happens? So that's a, sort of our driving question there. Later, we'll have them try to come up with the driving question. But again, model guide, step aside, we're showing them these things. So no surprise that they then go and chunk texting and driving. Now, in class, we know this takes like three, four, five iterations to get them from just saying everything that comes to their mind into uh, a situation that will allow them to be, that will guide them through the unit. In the distance learning, we just didn't think that kind of interaction was happening. So the switch up is now they go and do this just like they did with the pizza, low stakes. And then you as a teacher, you you pull out examples that um, emphasize what we're, the skills we want. And then we actually just provide them with our the system analysis. And we've modified it. Really, that's the screenshot of the Google Sheets. And then we just ask them to compare and contrast this model to their system analysis. And they see strengths and weaknesses. And we saw this in the summer workshop that, uh, the, you know, this is not the only way to do it. Sometimes the, the things that they've come up with are really good and we wanna celebrate that. Um, we do have educational reasons to use this though because we have pre-made tutorials and supports. So that is the thing that wins the day for utilizing this one. And so this will turn into their Google Sheets computational thinking is going to turn into the system analysis. Before we always had that on paper, which has a lot of value, but that's just not going to be this year. And we'll talk about, you know, next year, what will next year look like when, what do we take from the good from this year and uh, pull into uh, future learning as well? This might be one of them. Maybe that paper, maybe it's nicer to get over to it, but just so you know, this now we're instead of going to that paper and asking what's the next question, we're always going to go to the Google Sheet and ask them. So that is actually leading me into the next um, activity where I'm going to zoom back out to the calendar. So we just did the introduction to the phenomena and started the brainstorming. 
And now they are going to make that system analysis in Google Sheets. And that can be, if you want, and you know, it's, a, it's the appropriate, sorry, whoa, 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 I know that gets annoying when I'm clicking the wrong tab. Um, that can be a blank sheet. And I'll just quick show that. And that sometimes is intimidating, but uh, if, if that is, there is a pre-made copy. But let me just say there is tutorials that walks them through literally every single step. So uh, we had the case even with the teacher that didn't know how to do it, had their students doing it through the tutorials. Same thing as if we send a student to like Hour of Code, they can get through it. There is a step-by-step -step, um, one for them to go from that blank sheet all the way to um, a tutorial that looks just like the one that was made. So, you know, it has that ownership. You can decide what level is the appropriate challenge for your students. But in any case, I'll just show you that peak. There are videos that walk them through every step up not going to have very good luck with this, unfortunately. All right, so there are tutorials that walk them through every step to get to here. And then the question is, okay, how do we code velocity of a car? All right, so they would have to click in there. And we know that from unit one. So they would go ahead and type that. Time of distraction, uh-oh, we don't know how to do that. So you can guess what's next in our learning art. Let's go and do those mini experiments. and. I will say we got such positive feedback from the summer workshop with teachers going through this, looking forward to doing it with students myself. So what are the resources there? It's just an, a slide deck that again, there's those two questions on time of distraction, time of reaction. There's several resources down here, but we wanna get kids creative and uh, worked really well over Zoom. People, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes I notice that like teachers go straight to the resources and then just, um, and they're not perfect. Like, and they're not meant to be perfect. It's not like you go there and you just get an answer for your time of distraction. These are meant that they got to utilize these tools to help them create an argument. So in any case, just be aware of that. Um, there's a little bit of anxiousness at the beginning and then just, I would say hugely positive um, at the end. So know that, you know, there's no right answer. It's about convincing it's not it's about a good answer and a good answer is it's one that seems reasonable to the group all right so there's that resource for you and there is one more slide real simple of just what's your you know trials and your times what did you do and and then they present to the class so just like we do in person they have a group leader that would present okay i'm going to zoom back out i'm talking fast trying to pack in the uh, blast part. So just feedback to let me know, speed up, slow down. Okay, so we've made our tutorial. We've analyzed for time of reaction, time of distraction. And of course we go back to that system analysis, our Google sheet. And then the next question is, oh, we gotta go all the way down to time of breaking. Okay, how are we gonna get them to time of breaking? I'm gonna close some of these. And again, this is just that little bit of a dive. So, you know, there's six slides. We're just gonna look at two, yeah, teacher Desmos. And this one is playful. So this is not like students are masters of this, but they can just use these sliders. So they're just playing with it. It's not um, intimidating. They're not expected to master it yet. And really I'd say this year, it's more on exposure and practice versus mastery with this unit. Um, our big goals, again, just to remind us are graph literacy, computational thinking, scientific argumentation, CERs. Okay, so they just see that. Watch. Okay, yeah, if you have a really low speed, whoa, oh, no surprise. And again, and then we're encouraging them during this time, walk the triangle. Okay, what is this going to look like as a graph? What is this going to look like as an equation? And the equation is really tricky. So we want them playing and kind of having some expectations. All right, then they go to the next slide and it's a little bit more and it's a little bit more representations. And that's the goal here. So um, that is intentional. So again, they just can see like, okay, if I change the velocity, oh, that has that effect on the graph. Oh yeah, that makes sense. If you start with 30, oh yeah, you're dropping by five. We want to start uh, 
explicitly teaching graph literacy, let them start knowing those kind of things, verbalizing it, um, annotating it. Uh, you know, I'll just quick show that if you're talking about it, and of course they're just meant to explore, and they probably sometimes some students are going to short circuit this. I'm just going to show this quick, but you know, if you can annotate, you could just say, okay, in one second, it dropped by five, negative five meters per second. So we can we want to have those things. They're probably not going to use the annotation tool, but. Uh, we, of course, want them mentally doing that, if not literally doing that uh, with paper and pencil or some other technique. Um, some of students have touch screens that they could do that with. Okay, so in any case, I gotta get out of annotate. So let me... There we go. Okay, so they can see that. And what's gonna happen if the acceleration goes up? And, uh, oh, that's in the negative direction. That's right. So we can point out that in this case, if the positive velocity Acceleration is going to be negative to slow it down and no surprise. Hey, when you're going 30 and you slow down by 10. Okay, good. And then also just to be um, really thoughtful, this is challenging, but it's one that we can push them to. And you can be monitoring this on teacher Desmos. I saw a comment in the parking lot about that, but I haven't been able to address it yet. Uh, in any case, yeah, if you don't slow down all the way to zero and you're slowing down by 10, Okay, if you slow down all the way to zero, it took you three seconds. But what happens if you only slow down to, let's say, 20, from 30 to 20? Oh, that should only take one second. Yep. And then look at that, time of breaking, one second. All right, and then they go and they just X out the ones that are, I mean, some they can, you know, the worry was, will they just look at this answer? And that's not a bad thing. Um, no, it's supposed to be negative one, and this one is negative five, so it can't be that. That's good. Again, this is that guided inquiry. And so, yeah, they might do this, but then we want them to go back and understand, okay, why does that make sense? Play with that. Yep. Oh, okay. The velocity after minus before that one's an ugly looking equation. So they need some other experiences with this to feel comfortable, almost certainly. Okay. So that's just the peak. There's a couple more slides that says, hey, after you learn this, go and code your diagram. So, but I'm going to zoom back out and say, that's them playing. They didn't construct that equation. They're just playing with it. And that's complex. Remember to get there, we have the diagrams of the car at first, the graph, and then the mathematical and computational thinking. That, that gets them to making sense of that mathematical model. All right, so that's our time of breaking. We are, this is, this next one, we're gonna spend about 15 minutes. You'll go through in your groups, so you have a chance to, um, enrich it a lot, but to preserve the arc in this 20 minute part, I'm gonna show one feature and that is, you know, assessment for learning. And I don't know that if you put this in the grade book or not, but just that assessment, whether it's formative or summative. And I just want you to look at this for a minute. So I'm just gonna stop talking and let you look. And so what could we tell about students understanding of motion and graph literacy with this CER? And with that, I'll just pause. Okay, so I try to get in the parking lot there. And the parking lot is, yep, communal. So like, definitely please do that. And I just saw that comment that they can't see each other's stuff in uh, Teacher Desmos. I know, oh, it's frustrating. And uh, I bet that changes in the future, but it's not gonna be anytime soon. But that is why we have Google Slides. That's why we do need to switch over to Google Slides for right now, so. Um, but uh, the day will come where that probably changes and that's look forward to it for sure. Okay, so hopefully you kind of see this that we can tell a lot of information and really it's, it's I would call it a good assessment because it entangles three things, graph literacy, walking the triangle, maybe even four things and their ability, their understanding of motion because that's how they would interpret the graph in the 
diagrams and their ability to write CER. And, um, you know, it's harder to give feedback this year than ever before. So, you know, the CER is something that they do need feedback and you can give feedback through Teacher Desmos. Uh, you, it's a, yeah, cool. Um, the, uh, that, this is what happens to me. I try to read the chat in the parking lot and talk about the webinar and whoa, <laughs> overload. So got to hit the reset button here and say that uh, we were talking about CERs that, oh, you do have to enable the comment feature in Desmos. And so just Google it. It, it takes 30 seconds to watch, but uh, just type teacher Desmos enable commenting and uh, the link will take you to the instructions, 30 seconds. And I'll, I'll find that if someone puts that in the parking lot, I'll post it there. Okay, so there's a lot more. There's the, This one is rich. Really, again, I just want to hammer this. So it's not that they're masters of motion after this, that they understand everything. Like if you're going backwards and you have a negative acceleration, you're actually speeding up. No, that's not the goal of this Desmos. Okay, it's graph literacy, computational thinking, and arguing from evidence. So we didn't get everything with motion, just to make that clear. All right, so zooming back out, now we have all the pieces of the puzzle and they fully code their program. And then it's really looking at how do we enhance a social discussion with STEM? And, you know, what I'm hearing about assessment is there's a lot of the, it's going different directions and it, uh, people want it a lot more activity based than the quizzes. Uh, I still just want to encourage you to have students write, even if you're um, not going to grade it. They just need that practice, right? Um, that is maybe writing is more important in this distance learning model than ever before, right? That asynchronous communication oftentimes is writing is a major component of it. So um, writing and feedback, even if it's formative, but in any case, assessment opportunities here are there is uh, something we've done before too. Whoops, I put them in the reverse order up here. No, that's both. Oh yeah, no, it is the right order. Good. So it is a situation and you can make however many different versions of this that you want, but it is they take their app and you give them some initial conditions and then you change the situation on them. You know, okay, oh, now the breaks are gonna be this. What happens? And cite numbers from your computational thinking. So again, arguing from evidence where the evidence is stuff they generate from their simulation of a texting and driving incident. Just want to harp on that. So often, you know, they argue from evidence in all their classes and rightfully so in, in language arts, they use the plot and the character development to argue things. In history, they use historical texts and data. In science, they use data that they collect or in this case, generate from a simulation. All right, with all that, you can imagine that um, you can give them lots of different scenarios. They can also have to create their own situation and then modify their simulation for that. I'm resting on that you um, are thinking from the in-person experience how to do that. Uh, but uh, during the q and I could show that if there are questions. And then we have the graphic organizer for that CER at the end. We, uh, we made the step of them not writing it again on their own, just for time too. So one thing I want to say is this unit, uh, this unit could, if you want mastery at every task, this unit I fear could blow up and take like a month and a half. And we don't want that. We want to get to waves, power production and climate science and astronomy. Those are really well set up for distance learning. They have a ton of learning targets. So just kind of think that they don't have to master motion. It's graph literacy that we want them working on, computational thinking, and arguing from evidence. So I'd just say keep the pace up. And we decided that one of the other ways of doing that is in the CER is just keep it in the graphic organizer. If you did, you know, so that's a judgment call for you. If you do want them to take a day or something to, to write this again, you could do that. That's an option. Okay. So that, or let me circle back one more time and just show homework. There's a lot of good homework in this one. And I'll just say like one, it's just one, it's the looking for the patterns in the Olympics, kind of fun and 
obviously Olympics didn't happen this year, but postponed one more year. So kind of on people's minds still a little bit. And uh, the ultimate graph challenge is a game. So if you want to give them a little bit more practice and, you know, graphing to walking the triangle to situations and then make the graph, this Ted talk really excellent. It is like 12, 15 minutes, a little bit longer, but it's one of the few that students have really come back and talked to me about, like they actually watched it through and like it made an impact. So it, it really is talking about the value of how um, lot, you know, the math involves many things. And really they're talking about science, the way uh, he talks about it, and even really says that is um, math involves like wrapping your head around a problem, sounds a lot like engineering, then thinking about how you're going to tackle it then there's actually the calculation of it. And then there's bringing that calculation back to the real world. I mean, he's describing walking the triangle. And he says, you know, unfortunately in math class, they spend all their time on that third step, that calculation, learning how to algorithmically move the three over to the other side. And they're not thinking about, okay, what we in science talk about engineering, that engineering science mindset. Um, so I'll, keep that short. And then there's just another ultimate graph challenge, a little bit harder now that they know more about acceleration. So that wraps, ah, uh, this, there's a, this one's just for fun. Um, just shows that you don't have to always have a keyboard to enter stuff into a computer. Okay. So that wraps up the blast portion. So I'm going to go back to the agenda. We just looked and whipped through all of this. I'm going to take a, I'm going to pause here for a second and uh, just check the parking lot. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to answer everything, but I'll check the chat, the parking lot. And then we're gonna break, I was gonna just send you off on your own to break into a group and work your way through this Desmos activity builder. It, it's pretty standalone, but if you have an urgent burning question, put it in the new number one. I'm gonna move everyone down a little bit in the uh, parking lot. So I made I freed up slots one two three four. If you got a burning question while you're in the breakout group, sometimes that's just hard. You know, I use Idea Capture tool in class with my students for this one for this reason, and then also when they're like asynchronously doing homework, instead of sending me an email, which you know only one student sees, they start to put it in the parking lot, and sometimes the students will ask it. So there's other things that do that, but this is multifaceted. This works in so many ways that yes, there's a tool in discussions on Canvas, but then they got to go to Canvas and discussions for that. And then they got to go somewhere else during a breakout room. Like this is that one-stop shop. So that's just a, we use that for that reason and to show that you could use it. If you're in the breakout room though, urgent question, call me in or use the parking lot. With that, I know this has been a blast, but that is the webinar. So I'm about, I'm going to do the check if there's any burning questions or something that I missed and then create the breakout rooms, so. Ah, yep, cool comment, yep. I'm sure you maybe already saw it, homework. Yep, it can be Wednesday work, the asynchronous task if you have days that are like asynchronous. Yep, cool. Good, and a question about Canvas, that would be super cool. Okay, so then I'm going to Yep, the giving feedback in Desmos. Yep, I'll get that link up during this breakout room. And then also uh, Desmos, they do have to be in Desmos. Yes, to see the feedback. Okay, I'm gonna get the breakout rooms going. And uh, I encourage you, you know, put on that student hat. So, and don't think mastery, think guided inquiry that they're trying to get through it and things should make sense to them, not that they could recreate it on their own. Okay, with all that said, but still, you know, critiques, let's make it better, right? This has not been used with students. So if you see something that could be improved, let us know. All right. Uh, I kind of want smaller groups, just like twos and threes, but I'll, yeah. Okay, we're set. Okay. I'm gonna invite you to open rooms and you, sorry, just to make sure before you leave, you're clicking on that Desmos activity in the student experience 935 portion of the agenda. 
and you'll sign in with your name. One person in the group, if you would share your screen and let me just make sure that's allowed. Uh, I got to stop my screen share and I'm going to allow you to share your screen. And one person, we, you know, again, it's just, it, it works so much better. And if you don't want to, don't do it. But um, I just want to encourage you to do that. Students also do it. And I just noticed that when I join groups that have the shared screen, they're far more likely to be talking to each other. Um, so, but it's, it's a challenge and you got to motivate to get people to do it. So, yes. Okay, great. Yep. I'm going to... And one room is small, so I'm going to uh, move you to be with your partner. So, okay. And then, good. Is it, um, is it Annette? I don't know if, um, yep, cool.
Set timer for six minutes. And this will take that up to this portion of the graph. Yep. So it picks it up. And then they have the velocity of the reaction. It's the same. Although I, I, I find that this velocity of distraction, um, just the word velocity of distraction bugs me personally, but because um, it's the velocity of the car, why they're like, I just, uh, I'm going to make that clear with kids, I guess. Yeah, I think I always change it to distracted and reacting. Velocity while distracted and velocity while reacting. But I probably won't change it this year because it's already in Desmos for me like this. <laughs> Move the slider to change the car's velocity. Which means it started. Bradford here, I just check it in, bouncing around. And uh, just a couple things. Be, that is used in formulas, so it's really painful to change, unfortunately. And the that makes sense. So, like, reaction. no, no worries. I will just mention the reason why we called it that is it's the velocity during that phase. So the name we we chunked the problem into distraction, reaction, and braking. So it's the velocity in the distraction phase versus velocity in the. Uh, reaction phase, velocity in the braking. And I don't know if that makes it more understandable or not. Uh, feel free to change it. But if, when you look at this in your own teacher does most, there's a lot of, it's not just a one-time switch, unfortunately. I'll just, I was just gonna say hi and everything and check in and bounce around to other rooms. Any, um, any, uh, and we'll have some time together here. There's only about five more minutes. So I'm just gonna bounce out actually and let you keep going. Okay. All right, bye. So...
that was super helpful to go through that. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank you guys. It was helpful. Agreed. Awesome. awesome. Okay. Well then, um, the the thing I hope is I uh, got through most of the idea capture tool to put some responses. If you take just like 90 seconds to answer questions five and six, just a little bit about that experience and uh, the takeaway. And then really, um, I think I responded to everything in the parking lot. Um, and then some of your individual comments in your own idea capture tool. But again, if I could direct you to the idea capture tool questions five and six, like 90 seconds, like myself. 80 seconds of uh, just quiet time. And then we're really just going to open it up to multi channel, write something in the parking lot up top or down below. I'm going to ask down below so that we're not doing two spots. I'm going to get rid of one, two, three. Great. So I want to start to open it up a little bit, uh, see some really thoughtful comments and, and someone just pointing out how like graphs, it is awesome, right? To see just how many, there's just more graphs around now, like just in the last few years um, and infographics. So graph literacy is uh, more important than ever and graphs are a way of packing more information. So they can be used obviously to, um, obscure an issue as well, but graph literacy and some of our other work with critical thinking, hopefully is laying a good foundation. I, ju I just wanna open it up. I think I've responded to everything in the chat and the uh, parking lot. You know, sometimes it's just nice to be able to say something and, uh, you know, comments too. Um, Yeah, after you copy and edit in Desmos, you can, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a, it's kind of like a word file. Once you copy it, actually you can, it's not like a word file in maybe one sense. It's like a Google doc. When you first bring it over, it's in your drive and you can view it, but you might not have editing permission. Once you hit copy and edit, Boom, it's yours. You can change anything. Um, I will just say in the teacher Desmos, some of those equations are linked. So there's that question of like velocity distracted. Maybe it should be velocity while distracted or velocity of the car while driver's distracted, something like that. Those, there's some background coding and you can see it all on the left side when you open it as a teacher. That those, you can make those changes, but you will have to change it everywhere it shows up. And it's, it's like just two or three spots. So it's, it's doable, but it is more work. Uh, yep. Hey, Bradford, can I ask a question? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So um, it, I've usually taken like a couple days to get through this because our classes are short. Yeah. If I have kids do like, let's say the first four tabs of the Desmos, and then for the next day of class, I, I discover I wanted to make a change. Um, can I edit that? you know, at night and then the next day they see the edits. Yeah, I'm seeing that, no. And in fact, um, yep, once you generate the student code for them to get to it, it's static. So if you, you could okay. go and change that, 
but students will never see that. You would have to give them a new code. And okay, so the, the that. hacks are that you just, you just generate a new code and you get them started on that. They couldn't then tab back and see their old work. Okay. Yeah. Or you just deal with it and say, yeah. You and you cool. change it. And, you know, um, in the Desmos, like, you know, Facebook group, Desmos asked like, what do you want us to work on? And that's like the number one thing. And, and okay. it's tricky. So they, they're working on it, but who knows when it'll be released. Okay. Yep. All right, well, I saw a lot of people said that they made some new Desmos for like quizzes or go form it is. If you're willing to share that stuff, that is, you know, some of why we don't have that. It's just, it's work limited and that's the power of collaborative impact, right? So if you are willing to share that stuff, that um, people are super appreciative. So, um, and then I guess maybe I wanna leave time, for, feel free to interrupt me, but I'll, I just wanna fill the time with valuable stuff to make this worth your time. So uh, after unit two, our plan is to jump to unit five. So like not doing forces, no, we're not saying not do forces, but we are gonna weave in forces into the astronomy unit. And then uh, energy, of course we're doing energy. In fact, energy is so important. We really had it in two units always, right? Unit three and unit six. But this year things are taking longer um, and and we need to make modifications. And so the uh, important parts of unit six almost really does cover conservation of energy already. It's just so important that we want to hit it twice, but this year we're not going to hit it twice. We're just going to hit it the one time in unit six. So know that uh, the priority forces and energy are the most important targets. They're definitely not going away, but we're not doing, you know, there are probably ways of teaching forces uh, Newton's laws in a way that, but not with the shoe. So, and we didn't want to make people learn a whole new arc. So in any case, um, the shoe just did not seem to translate to distance learning. In fact, its goals were to be the opposite of distance learning. It was supposed to be like hands-on, talking together all the time, iteration, giving feedback, just all the things that are most difficult. So with that, um, and that's being worked on by the council right now. So that is not ready right now, but uh, the aim is in two weeks. I'm just checking here, but yeah, any, uh, I, you know, I saw that positive reaction. So if anyone's willing to just share a little bit on, uh, it was good to go through it. Like what, what stuck out to you? I mean, one, like to go through it so you see it what do you think about students going through it? Either of those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I, I saw the comment about period one being the guinea pig. And that's kind of how we want to treat this right now, right? That's kind of what I'm doing is like, is yeah, what was good? And was there a roadblock that we should uh, fix before we do this with students? All right, well, I'll say, you know, it sounds like a couple of people are starting texting and driving real soon. So you're probably gonna finish in two or three weeks. So it's gonna be a uh, tight timeline, but we'll, uh, I'm pretty sure PMSP will be sending out a, uh, you know, do another webinar and that'll probably be in that two, you know, two weekends from now, or maybe during the week too. I, I wasn't sure why both were on the weekend, but might uh, just be the need for it. Um, in any case, uh, please do share, stay in touch. And I'm, you know, it's easy to read a couple line email. So if you just want to say like you had some celebration, send me an email. That is not like troubling. That's good. Nice. Those, that's a nice email. So definitely, um, stay in touch. And, uh, with that, I think we're just going to, I'll hang out here, but we'll, we'll make the official end and it's hokey and corny, but I, I, I saw it and I've liked it and I do it every day in class and we come up with different versions of it. But the easiest one is just like a three, two, one. If you're willing to unmute and just say bye, yeah, we'll stop the recording and I'll hang out for just a little bit of time. Sometimes people like to 
have a, a smaller group conversation. So with that said, I'll do a uh, countdown. We'll say bye. We'll stop the recording and uh, stay on if you got a question that was more small group. All right. Three, two, one. Bye. 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 bye.